Welcome to K. Keith Photographer's Digital Images Techniques and Tips for the Novice Photographer. And now, coming at you almost live from Kansas City, USA, here's your host, Ken Keith. Hi, everyone, and welcome back. A big shout out to those of you in the local users group and those of you who are so kind to visit with us on Vimeo and at YouTube. Well today uh, we're going to have a short tutorial unlike the last two and I know everybody would be glad about that uh, and this has to do with sharpening and we've had other tutorials on sharpening before but specifically we're going to look at selective sharpening with uh, the high pass filter and using a layer mask. Now this would also work um, in um, Lightroom and in, in Photoshop also the, the big version the CS5 and but this is specifically for those of you who are using Photoshop Elements 9 and if you have a older version of Elements and you're going to stay in the uh, Elements software I strongly recommend that you upgrade to Elements 9. This image is a, a raw file and if you follow me on uh, my photo blog, uh, kkeithphoto.wordpress.com, you will see this one uh, in its um, high dynamic range version in which I've taken this as what you'd call a normal exposure and I've uh, merged that with a, a minus two and a plus two stop uh, version and uh, we ran this through uh, Unified Colors HDR Express software to create a, uh, a really pretty high dynamic range uh, image here of the Country Club, Country, I'm sorry, Country Club Plaza, and this is the J.C. Nichols Fountain there. But uh, if you're not doing high dynamic range and all, but uh, we're going to sh just take this normal exposure, um, and I, I did not apply any sharpening in the Camera Raw dialog box. I just made my uh, few minor tweaks in exposure and added a little bit of clarity and opened it right up here into Elements. So as you know, uh, or I'm sure you do, uh, to do high pass sharpening, you're going to uh, first of all duplicate your background layer, and I'm just going to use the the keyboard shortcut Control and J to do that. Go up to Filter, Other, High Pass. Uh, I've cranked this up uh, to five pixels, which is uh, probably the upper limit of what I would normally do and and generally I'm not up this far but um, I wanted to get them up a little ways so that you could evaluate it more easily uh, on your um, screen. I'm going to click OK and then um, when you do your blend modes most people will say overlay a little less snap your version is soft light some will also so you can use hard and vivid light and you certainly can use those so these are your four blend modes uh, this time I'm going to use hard light uh, once again I just want to make this where you can see things uh, better at home and um, this has applied uh, quite a bit of sharpening now I'm going to, to zoom in to this area of the sky because I'm really not interested in sharpening anything up there. I'm just interested interested in the foreground. And in, and uh, hopefully you can see some of this luminous noise up here in the sky. If I turn off this uh, sharpening layer, uh, there's virtually none. Now if I wanted to fine-tune this, uh, you at home, if you have Lightroom, of course you can use the noise reduction there, which is really good. Uh, a standalone program uh, that I often recommend and I, I have myself is Noiseware by Imaginomics but uh, as you see I probably wouldn't bother uh, because the, this would not be a problem uh, once it's it's printed but to me we'll turn this sharpening layer back on uh, now it starts to become a problem so what do I want to do with that I, I do want to keep my sharpness down here I don't want it up here so what I'm going to do is is add a layer mask and uh, of course this is your icon and instead of just uh, clicking on it I'm going to hold down alt and then click on it so that my layer mask shows up as black and so what is happening here then if you convert it to black 
that the sharpening layer is being hidden and all you're seeing is, is the background layer. And that's kind of the way we want it to be except that we want the, all the foreground detail uh, to be highly detailed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that my mask itself is selected. I'm going to get a brush, have my foreground color to white, and I'm just going to start uh, painting down here in the areas where I want the sharpness to appear. So by painting with white it will reveal the sharpness layer and here it comes. And I'm not going to do a, a real steady job here, a complete, uh, because you get the idea and there's no use to be going over it. It's, it's nice you can see on your mask uh, any areas that you missed, I see a little bit over on this side and a little bit down in here. And uh, then you can fine tune your brushes, make them smaller with your bracket keys. And that, uh, for example, if I want to go up here to the to the spike of this uh, plume of water, I can get in there. If you wanted to do a really precise sharpening of uh, these straight edges. Uh, of the buildings you, you could even convert to a, a hard edge brush and a square brush and and uh, click and go right along those edges and make them very nice so once again go back into this area you can see that there is uh, we've, we've not affected the pixels at all up here there's no luminance noise at all there and uh, that's exactly the way we wanted it if we go down here to the areas that we did want to be highly detailed, like in here, uh, if I turn that turn that sharpening layer off, there is the before, and there is the sharpened. It really brings it out, and so now I have the best of both worlds. My main subject, nice and sharp, and I've let my sky alone so that there's not any luminance noise there. So have a great week ahead and we'll talk again.